Hello and welcome back. Today I'm making a video to help give people a better understanding of orbits. I'm going to use some demonstrations and hopefully to help you visualize them better. I'm going to represent an orbit in two dimensions using this air table I built. Click up in the card to see how that was done. But this represents a frictionless surface, which is basically what space is. If you push something in space, it keeps going forever. You can see that as I push this disc around, it just keeps sliding off the table. However, there is one force in space. A lot of people don't realize this, but gravity on the space station is about the same as on Earth. I'm going to represent gravity with this string. The other end has a weight attached, so it constantly pulls the disc towards the center of the table. A lot like how gravity pulls you towards the center of the Earth. Now you can see, no matter what I do, I can throw this disc up, but it always falls back down. What goes up must come down. So if this is true, then how do space stations and satellites stay in space? Well, it's actually pretty simple. The rocket goes up, escaping the atmosphere. I'll represent this by pulling the disc away from the center of the table. Then the rocket burns aside, giving it a bit of horizontal momentum. Let's break this down with a diagram. We have the force of the string pulling in towards the table, and momentum going perpendicular to that. The interaction of these two elements results in a circular path, much like when you swing a rope or a bucket of water above your head. The rope or your arm is constantly pulling towards you, but the weight at the other end wants to keep going in a straight line. These forces balance out and result in a circular path. This is basically what goes on with the ISS or satellites in orbit. Gravity pulls them towards the center of the Earth, but their momentum keeps them in a circular path. Now let's see what happens if I push the disc a little faster. You can see that it actually climbs up to a higher altitude than it was at before, and then falls back down. This is called an elliptical orbit. The same happens if I start higher, but move the disc slower. In fact, these two orbits are basically identical to each other, the only difference is how the disc got there. Now most satellites and spacecraft try to stay in a circular orbit. However, elliptical orbits are still useful. Let's look at the most basic orbital maneuver, the Hohmann transfer. Consider this, you're in a low altitude orbit like this one, and you want to get to a higher altitude orbit like this one. How do you do that? Well, you can't just push the disc up and expect it to end up in a circular orbit. So we use this maneuver. You accelerate the disc, putting it into an elliptical orbit that carries it to higher altitude. Once it's at this higher altitude, you can accelerate it again, and that circularizes the orbit. This is the basic maneuver behind most of orbital dynamics. You might not think that this two-dimensional model is very accurate because our world's in three dimensions, but if you think about it, most stable orbits exist on their own plane. Again, you can think of this like swinging a rope over your head. If you're swinging consistently, it will travel on a circular path in a flat plane. So its basic motion is still two-dimensional. The same is true for most orbits. Now obviously there's a lot more to talk about when it comes to orbits, but I want to keep this video simple and short. If you learned something from this video, be sure to like it and share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe. But anyway, that's all for today. I'm Con Hathi. Bye.